What's up, Heat fans? We got some major roster news and roster moves that happened today before the official deadline to submit your rosters for the start of the regular season. Obviously, Miami starts their 24-25 campaign this upcoming Wednesday night at home against the Orlando Magic, and now the roster is fully set. I'm Nick Roloff from the Heat Report by Chat Sports. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we're going to be live for almost every Heat game and we're dropping content on a daily basis, making sure you're up to date on everything surrounding this Heat basketball team. So hit that sub button and let's just jump right into the news. As after the preseason, after training camp, after all the shenanigans going on over the past two or three weeks, we have our roster. And it's really not surprising to this point on what Miami ended up doing as they did have to make a decision at 5 p.m. Eastern time today to guarantee Nasir Little's contract or not, and then also either wave Exhibit 10 contract players and guys like that. So there is no surprise. I'm just going to go right through it. Nasir Little waved. Zion Pullen waved. Warren Washington waved. Isaiah Stevens waved. And I think we'll start with Nasir Little. We'll get into Isaiah Stevens in just a second, um, which ultimately means who's on the two-way contracts. But Nasir Little was obviously given a non-guaranteed contract one year um, a couple weeks ago for the preseason and training camp, and a lot of people were excited by the move. I think I was one of them included, former second overall crew out of high school, went to North Carolina, former first-round pick. Um, he did some nice things in in the preseason games. There's no denying that. Uh, he showcased athleticism. He even made a couple threes last night against Memphis in the final preseason game for Miami. But it just was obvious from the jump that there's no chance of him making the roster. And I know it's tough to say that, and it's kind of mean to say that out loud, but it's really the case of Nasir Little. Like, unfortunately, due to Miami Heat's cap situation and how close they are to the second apron, it didn't matter how little you would cost Miami the vet men would have pushed the heat into the second apron and Nasir Little um sorry to break it to you is not worth signing to a one-year guaranteed contract to put Miami in the second apron and have all those punitive things come into play where you can't aggregate contracts in a trade you lose other freedoms as well in terms of roster construction and roster building. It just simply would not have been worth it to keep Nasir Little on a guaranteed contract, and he's waived. Now, Nasir Little does have the option, if he wanted to, to go to the G League and play in Sioux Falls with Miami. We'll update you on if he chooses that route or just chooses to go overseas, chooses to um, sign with a different team. We'll end up seeing what ultimately happens with Nasir Little. But it won't be with the main team on the Miami Heat. And we also mentioned Zion Pullen, Zay Stevens, and Warren Washington also being waived. Um, I don't think anyone was shocked by Zion Pullen or Warren Washington. But Isaiah Stevens is someone that I know a lot of Heat fans, including myself, were intrigued about in his full and long-term potential with this ball club. And I'm hoping he stays inside the organization, but it will not be on a two-way contract. Drew Smith is keeping that two-way deal. And we're going to talk about that more in a second. But let me know, um, should the Heat have kept Isaiah Stevens over Drew Smith? Type Y for yes or type N for no. As much as I said it during Summer League, as much as I said it during the offseason, as much as I was saying it before training camp began about how I believe that Isaiah Stevens, the UDFA, who was on Exhibit 10 contract out of Colorado State, would ultimately take the final two-way contract away from Drew Smith, I quickly changed my tune once I heard everything coming out of training camp. Once I saw Drew Smith play in the preseason with the second unit of the real Heat squad, it was very, very evident that Drew Smith was going to be a two-way player for this Miami Heat team. Because you were allowed to play them um, significantly this season. Like You get to play them 30, 40 games this year. And with Josh Richardson being out of the lineup at the start of the year, still trying to recover from that shoulder injury, the Heat do not have a backup guard whatsoever. And even you can say with Josh Richardson, they don't have a backup point guard. Like they're a very point guardless team. And I think that is going to be something that's going to be fun and interesting because it does mean that in that second unit with Jaime, Duncan Robinson, uh, you're going to see Alec Burks, you're going to see Drew Smith, like you're going to see a bunch of guys that can all handle the rock and all be the initiators, all be the playmakers. And that just adds to the layers and toughness of this Miami Heat offense that's going to be a little bit of a new look this year. But Drew Smith does a lot of things that Pat Riley and Eric Spolster really like. As much as some Heat fans dislike that and are done with the Drew Smith experience, I get it. But the simple fact of the matter is, he makes the Heat team better this season in the first two, three months of the year. 
than Isaiah Stevens would. And yes, you run the risk of another team going out there and signing Isaiah Stevens to a two-way contract and poaching him, but on the off chance he's able to slip through the cracks and Stevens ultimately heads to Sioux Falls for the Miami Heat and plays with the G League squad, they're still going to get a chance to develop him and have him in the organization. And remember, you can change two-way contracts anytime. So once Josh Richardson comes back, and is healthy, and you don't need Drew Smith playing day-to-day on the real Heat team anymore, you can always just release him from the two-way contract. And as long as Isaiah Stevens isn't signed somewhere else on a two-way deal, you can give him a contract. They can be changed at any time. So I'm not going to make the biggest deal out of this, but it is worth noting that the final two-way contracts, you get three of them, is Drew Smith, Kashad Johnson, and Josh Christopher. To absolutely no surprise there that Christopher stays there. He looks good again in the training camp and preseason portion here where he can really just be a shot maker. Needs to improve on some things defensively, ball handling, no doubt about it. But he is a tough shot maker and he is a good catch and shoot guy. And obviously, Kashad Johnson, someone Miami signed really, really quickly after the draft concluded last June. And they made it a priority of keeping him in this organization. Uh, He stays on a two-way contract and he'll probably be playing in Sioux Falls. I would say Josh Richardson... Excuse me, um, Josh Richardson. Oh my God, um, Josh Christopher is going to be in the G League as well with Miami. But I mean, they've shown enough to be on this two-way contract. We're going to continue the conversation here in just a second. But we are sponsored by Game Time, the number one way to get your tickets. And if you want to go see the Heat play in person in their home opener this upcoming Wednesday, make sure you get your tickets with Game Time. They have so many decent features and awesome things to make your experience even easier, including Game Time Picks, a new feature that filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. They show a full panoramic view of the venue and your seat before you purchase so you know exactly where you're sitting. You're not going to be sitting behind a pole, a stanchion, anything like that. You'll be able to see exactly where you're sitting. And Game time specials and last minute tickets. And listen, I was in New York City this past weekend watching Mets, Dodgers, NLCS game four and five. I didn't plan on going to game five, but I was in the city. Me and my dad were like, you know what? Let's pull up game time and see what the prices are for game five on Friday night. They were just so spectacular. They're the lowest price guaranteed. And they really do stand by that because they were the best value we could have got. And we ended up getting our tickets with game time as we do with every single time I go out to a venue in a live event. I get my tickets with game time. So download the app and use code chat. At sports when you create an account to get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, first purchase only, but again, code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S. When you download the app and create an account, get $20 off your first purchase. What time is it? It's game time. All right, let's continue with the conversation now about this Heat roster, and we'll just really round out with what the team is as a whole. And We're obviously going to see the starting lineup that we've seen all preseason. When you see the Heat lineup on Wednesday against the Magic, 30 minutes before tip-off, it's going to be Terry Rozier, Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, Nikola Jovic, and Bam Adebayo. Luckily, and I'm going to knock on wood here that this doesn't change, but no injuries sustained during the preseason. So everyone's going to be healthy, ready to go. That was already healthy for this first game against the Magic on Wednesday. And and it sucks to say this, but it's a big game right off the bat. Like, I know people are going to say it's game one of 82, blah, blah, blah. But the Magic, you play them four times. They're in your division. You're going to be fighting for playoff position for them this season with them. You're in that same tier. Outside of New York, Philly, and Boston, that next tier of teams that I include the Heat in, Indiana, Milwaukee, Orlando, Cleveland, like these guys are all going to be fighting to be in the top six, be from four to six potentially, not be that seven or eight seed in the play-in. And if you don't want to be in that play-in, you're going to have to have the tiebreaker over some of these teams. And any game against one of those four or five teams I just mentioned that are in that same tier as you are going to be massive. So game one at home against the Orlando Magic, Paolo Bancaro, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Franz Wagner, you are going to need the ball out. So you see that starting lineup everyone's healthy for a big start to the season good to have you're still obviously gonna have off the bench you're gonna have Haywood Highsmith Duncan Robinson Jaime Jaquez Jr. Alec Burks you're gonna have um, Kalel Ware on the active roster don't think he'll play much because Kevin Love and Thomas Bryant are clearly ahead of him on the depth chart and supposed to trust them more at least this early on in the season, and it was indicative of the way they played Ware in the preseason, that he is simply not going to have a role on this Heat team off the jump. It's going to be Thomas Bryant and Kevin Love, hopefully more Kevin Love, because I can't take watching Thomas Bryant anymore. I can't do it. But unfortunately, he is going to be, I think, ahead of Kalel Ware on the depth chart. 
You still have Pillow Larson, and then obviously Josh Richardson is on the roster, but he will not be active. So that's your Heat team. And then, like I said, you got two way players Drew Smith, Josh Christopher, and Kashad Johnson. I'd expect Christopher and Johnson to both start in the G League with the Sioux Falls squad. I'd expect Drew Smith to stay on the active roster. Well, that's the bad way to put it, but at least stay in Miami for this game and really for the first two weeks maybe until Josh Richardson is back in the lineup because with Josh out, they are going to rely on Drew Smith as a secondary ball handler when both Rozier and Hero are out. And we didn't really get to see a full look at the rotations from Eric Spolstra. The first time we'll see it is this upcoming Wednesday against the Magic because they really just did platoon shifts every single time in the preseason. They play the starting group together for seven minutes. Take them all out and put them back in for another seven minutes. Like We didn't get to see rotations, and I would expect to see Terry and Tyler split up most of the game. They'll probably st- they'll obviously start together, but after four minutes, five minutes, I think Terry or Tyler will head to the bench. The other one will stay on, and then it will just kind of be a running thing <clears throat> that each of them will have one of them be on a bench, one of them be on the floor, and then with four minutes, five minutes to go in the half and the game is when they potentially rejoin up and have that final five there. But there's a lot of players on this team that can handle the ball and uh, it's exciting to see Jaime's development, Jovic's development, Bam's evolution offensively, um, Jimmy Butler motivated. I think a fun season is ahead here at the Heat Report, which is why you need to be subscribed because, listen, I was negative on him at times during the offseason. There's no doubt about that. But after seeing the different look of this Heat offense in the preseason, a full year of Terry Rozier, another jump from Jovic, a jump from Jaquez, the jump in three-point shooting from Adebayo, there's a lot to be excited about for this Miami Heat basketball team. And the people that are counting them out and saying they're going to be a locked-in playing team, I just think are flat-out wrong. And I know it's a big if because they haven't been able to do it. But if the Heat are able to get a healthy season from Tyler, Jimmy, those are really the only two they got to worry about because Bam relatively plays all the games. I think Terry's neck injury was an anomaly last year. So if you can get 65 plus from both Jimmy and Tyler this upcoming year, I think this team is going to be a top five seed without a question and really make some noise again in the Eastern Conference. So make sure you subscribe for that because it's going to be one hell of a season. I'll see you with videos leading up to the game, but we're going to be live on Wednesday for the first game of the season.